So the book we're going to talk about uh, this time around is um, Living in Data, A Citizen's Guide to a Better Information Future by Jer Thorpe. Paulina, um, yes. can you give us a little summary of this book? Sure, yeah. Um, so Jer kind of uh, explores how diverse data can be, um, but kind of as someone who started off with a very uh, sort of, I would say, like hard science-y bent to his understanding, although mm -hmm. he was always interested in sort of artistic endeavors and he refers to himself as like a data artist, um, there's still a heavy reliance on what I would kind of call like typical data. But the book um, tracks his sort of realization that these numbers that we all tend to think of as like the data or a kind of the data um, are really expressed in a variety of ways as well. Um, for example, through um, interpersonal connections and relationships, um, as well as through things like your actual body and your physical experiences. And so it's a really great um, example of this sort of interface of what we typically think of as like big data, so like numbers and statistics, um, but also the ways that those are actually reflecting real living beings and real living experiences. What was it that you liked most about this book? I liked a lot of things about the book. Um, there, were, there were there were a lot of little tidbits that I, I really enjoyed. Um, the one that kind of resonated with me that I remember the most, um, particularly he happens to be Canadian um, and I am also Canadian and that's a, a, a whole other story. Um, but there's a little bit of just, he's kind of uh, a little bit of like an outsider perspective to certain things that are very American um, that I thought was really, really interesting as he referred to some places. I'm like, oh, I've been, been to that area and that sort of thing, um, but completely unrelated because that's how my, my I wanted to tell that story. Um, he had a story about um, a data art project that was quite a bit older than he thought. It was called One Tree. It was about an artist, as, as I can recall it, who um, took a, a tree, tree seeds and, he, and they planted them. Um, I, I believe actually the artist was a woman planted them all throughout San Francisco and um, planted them all at the same time. And um, you can walk to see the different trees to see if they've grown and how they've grown and, and that sort of thing. Um, and he talked about like, uh, there's a quote about like feeling data in his lungs. And that just really, that. Um, really spoke to me because we so often think about like data as, you know, if it's physical at all, it's in a table. Um, it's, it's like, uh, it's still abstracted for us. Yeah. It's still abstracted. Um, and, and when he said that, like, I feel data in my lungs, it really was that like, yeah, actually that is the first place that we experience data is not, is not this abstraction thing. We feel it in our bodies. We, we observe it with our eyes. We can touch it with our hands. We have all of these senses that that's the first place we interact with data is through our lived experience. And I just, um, and that like translates into other bits in the book as well. Um, like particularly when he talks about indigenous data sovereignty, that's very much the orientation of, of those data, data folks. Um, and so I absolutely really, really, uh, really, really liked that part of the book. Um, so Megan, uh, what part uh, or what details can you remember from the book that, that you think are important for people to be aware of? So one of the things I found really interesting in this was that um, the discussions of, of data sovereignty as related to genetics and genetic data, um, how it specifically talked about the, the ways in which the people who are sampling the data, how it's, it's their data, um, how they're starting from a position of, of strength in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, and I also found it interesting because you don't see a lot written about data sovereignty uh, within North America that doesn't have to do with North America. So mm -hmm. I found it interesting to see that the way that, that these data concepts are being talked about and used in places outside of, of uh, North America. Um, yeah. Um, so based on that, uh, you know, some of the various really cool things about this book, Megan, how do you feel that this book uh, fits the theme that it's a part of, which is uh, what are data? Yeah, um, 
the way that the author comes at things from being in the hard sciences and from um, data visualization through through more artistic means, I think creates a different sort of narrative about what are data. Um, they're coming at it from um, from a much a much less abstracted way, even though art can be quite abstract in the way you create digital data visualizations. Um, and and I think it is a different perspective that is not necessarily uh, the typical perspective we see when we're talking about what data are and how data are and why data are. Um, I, I really enjoyed this book. Uh, I bought this book basically pre-sale. I pre-sailed to this book um, <laughs> because I was very excited to see it. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, I think it's a good read that isn't too intense for people who are not data scientists. I think there's enough variety within it that uh, that it covers enough different topics that people could really find uh, something interesting in it for them that relates to to their own personal experiences of, of data. How about you? Yeah, um, I think that it, you know, uh, I could go very basic and say that data is in the title. Um, so <laughs> um, clearly it, it fits the theme, but I think that it also does some really cool things with the way that it, it, it explores data. It acknowledges that data in a variety of shapes and forms really influences all human lives and, and even non-human lives. Um, and I think that's a really important thing for us to keep in mind. Um, but it also brings a uh, really good sort of uh, sticking points to certain kinds of people who talk about data. Um, he talks kind of almost like data um, as archaeologists, we often oftentimes will talk about sort of like objects having agency. And I think that the way that Jur deals with data is almost as if data has agency because it also starts to very much exert its power over us at certain points in time. Like there's another section of the book where he talks about um, instead of uh, making data collection fit systems fit to the knowledge we want to collect, that people will change their behavior to fit a data collection a process or a data structure. And it's such an interesting way that, um, that, that we're kind of conforming ourselves to a certain certain thing instead of making it work for us. And it's a really great reminder that, you know, we 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 are the things experiencing the data and creating it. Um, it doesn't just exist out there. So we should be aware of how we um, have that relationship with our data because it is it has real impacts on people's lives and it is a product of human life as well. Um, so it's just a, a really great reminder of that in the same way that um, when we talked about uh, braiding sweetgrass, um, there were like knowledge system things or ways of seeing the world and thinking about that all of those things can in some fashion become structured data. We just have to understand that the structures will be different. Um, and yeah, we are not spreadsheets. We are we people. Are not, no. If uh, people enjoyed this book, Megan, um, what are some other things that you would recommend them search out if they want to explore some of the topics that we've uh, talked about or that the book engages with? This book is a great starting overview sort of book. And it, it in a lot of ways, I know every, every author comes to work with their own biases and their own framework, but um, this one I found I felt was more middle of the road on some things, mm -hmm. um, but that could be because when I think about things like democratizing data and data sovereignty, maybe I'm not as middle of the road as I think I am. <laughs> but uh, I, I think I think it's a good starting place, uh, and you mm -hmm. could basically take any of the topics within the book and jump from there to more in depth work um, on any on any particular thing. Yeah. How about you? Um, yeah, I have a, a couple, we may have mentioned them in the past. Um, there's, of course, work specifically on uh, sort of decolonizing data that you mm -hmm. can search out. Um, I think there might even be an edited volume called Decolonizing Data. Um, there also, I believe, is a book called Indigenous Data Sovereignty, where you can um, explore more about those concepts. Um, uh, and I believe the book touches on the concept of iwi, which is the um, uh, Maori uh, 
uh, exploration or understanding of knowledge and, and kind of mm -hmm. um, their own knowledge. Um, along that, uh, Jason Lewis has some really interesting indigenous, indigenous sort of technology work that um, I think is definitely worth exploring. Um, as far as sort of non non or sort of as far as fiction is concerned, um, the way that he explores or understands the world uh, reminded me a little bit of this manga called Yotsuba and, um, which is about a small girl, a like five or six year old girl who just like finds a new thing and just gets really excited and enjoys it. Um, and so each chapter is like Yotsuba and the thing that she's discovered. And I feel like that's, that's lovely. Sort of playful. Yeah, that playfulness that she approaches the world and being um, and, and being sort of uh, open to it and, and seeing this in like just really through her original her own perspective uh, kind of reminded me of the way that he discusses his project his process um, also as far as music there's a, a song by Louis Zong called Thumbnail which is just a very cute um, sort of technology oriented song um, it talks about like data compression and, and things like that and it's just a, a really fun sort of exploration of, of that data um, so if you want something sort of on the on the um, not less academic um, lens, uh, those are the, the recommendations that I would have for this book. That sounds excellent. Um, so you want to recap us real quick here at the end, what we've been talking about today? Sure. Um, so today we talked about Living in Data, A Citizen's Guide to a Better Information Future, which is a book in our What Are Data series. And the book is about um, data and how it is part of our lived experience um, and how we need to make sure that we think about ourselves as being in relation to it rather than sort of being uh, subservient to it, I guess. All right. Well, thank you so much, Paulina. No problem. Thank you, Megan.